G'day folks. Well, I got a request the other a few days ago, I think, or a week ago, by True Blue Australian. Um, look up his site and subscribe if you want. Uh, unfortunately, he just lost everything he owned in the Queensland flood. He lost his house, the lot, and I think all he's got is his laptop. His last video was from a hotel on his laptop or something, and that's about it. So, he posed a question for me and asked, asked for a video. Uh, what happens to the air conditioners in a flood and how hard would it be to fix them? Well, like what, what gets damaged in a flood and what can be done to fix them and get them running again? Uh, which I understand because it's going to be hot and humid as hell up there and a lot of people with minor water damage might want to uh, remove that moisture from their house by using the air conditioner as a dehumidifier. Particularly split systems where the condensing unit might have been outside on the ground and gotten flooded but the water didn't get up high enough to affect the indoor unit which is full of sensitive electronics like this. So they're fairly safe if they haven't had water in sensitive electronics. If it's anything like this in the condensing unit if it's an inverter well maybe it's a bit of tough luck it's probably never going to be working again. You get oxide and shit between these pins there'll be river mud, black mud in everything. I cannot see something like this being readily fixable not after a flood and sitting for a week with moisture in it. All the relays that have to be replaced, these are all relays, they'll be full of shit. Um, yeah, so if it's an inverter, pretty much throw in the bin. But we'll look at some older style units and hopefully be able to help some of these guys out. Yeah, so this is what you really need to uh, remove humidity from a flooded home. This is a proper commercial dehumidifier. I should really put the front panel on it, but it's pulled all of that out on one of those humid days. I haven't run it since, but when the humidity was really high, it pulled all that out in one afternoon. That's a lot. So that's the condensing coil there. It just runs down, drips onto the pan and into the bay bottom. Condensing coil's just in behind it. You can see the other side of it in the front. So it's really just an air conditioner with the two coils back to back instead of out one outside, one inside. Makes the place slightly warmer helps drive up moisture and then picks it up and great to have this one was $500 in 99 so they're a bit expensive but they are very handy especially if you live in a moisture laden area like this house is terrible for moisture and we'll go into window air conditioners outside I think I'll use one that's already out of the wall but you've got to pull them out to clean them probably end up pulling it to bits, in the long term pull it to bits and change the fan motor bearings but in the short term just hit them with some CRC or inox and just get it going run it till it stops other electronics pretty much unrepairable after a flood gets them plasma TVs don't even think about it got millions of relays and other stuff even if you wash the crap off the boards and dry them you still get water impregnating transformer cores and relays and other shit not to mention the silt the silt would turn into cement. So, it'd be interesting to try and resurrect a plasma that's been flooded, but unfortunately they're a bit of a lost cause. The average average CRT television probably be alright. Just dry it out very thoroughly after washing it in hot soapy water. Wash the board, dry all, drive all the moisture out of the transformers, and they'd work again. I fixed the TV which had coke spilled down the back of it while it was off. If it was powered up when it was immersed, it'd be fried. So, it's a bit hit and miss. Same with computer main boards. I had one of those which had soda or something on it and give it a hot soapy bath, stick it in a 60 degree Celsius oven for a while. Good as gold. Just don't exceed the temperature rating on the capacitors and you're right. That board lasted three years before it was replaced and it was replaced not because it died, just it was obsolete. Yeah, there's another plasma I'm fixing and you can just see there's very fine coils. You've got all the behind the ribbon cables, behind the panels, all the driver boards. Nah. It'd be nice to fix them and save them, but... I don't know, immersion does horrible things to electronics. Yeah, things like office equipment and copiers, pretty much forget it. They all run ball bearing races and sensitive optics. You'd be spending most of your life cleaning dirt out of the optics and replacing bearings. This thing's probably got 200 bearing races in it which it all pack it in uh, once they dry out and rust. So pretty much all office equipment is rubbish once it gets water in it. 
computer hard drives can be saved if you've got important files on them. Most of them these days are almost hermetically sealed. Uh, just take the PCB off, wash it, clean it very carefully and dry it out. Put it back together again and it should work. But some hard drives do have a little breather hole in them with a felt or very fine filter cover. If that's the case then water's probably gotten inside it and it's a loss. Main boards these days, they're a dime a dozen so you're probably better off just save your hard drive and chuck the rest. Now as far as salvaging flood damage split systems go, it'll depend entirely on what make and model it is. Um, a lot of these ones here I have are inverters. If it says inverter on it, don't waste your time with it. The border we flooded and by now, about a week or so onward from when the water level went down, it'll be full of corrosion and crap. The Dakin inverter, they're a pain in the ass at the best of times, let alone when they've been full of water. So don't waste your time with them. These normal non-inverter, like normal alternating current compressor units could be fixed. Uh, the fan motors would be the ones that cop the most grief though. You'd um, have to pull them apart, clean them out, drain them, dry them out and change the bearings. Same with indoor air handler blowers. There's a motor in there but that's not designed to be immersed. So that would also have to be dried out and overhauled. Likewise you've got a relay in there. If that's immersed and full of water then it probably won't work again properly. Um, just little things. They'll be niggly little problems. So if you can get insurance to cover them, do it. But if you're stuck for it, well you might just be pulling your air conditioner apart and changing fan motor bearings. Let's take the cover off one of these things and have a closer look inside. I'll show you some other things to clean and check out. Yeah, this is a Fujitsu inverter and again it won't survive any kind of flooding. There's too many other, too many sensitive components and places for water to pool in the inverter box and just do permanent damage. Uh, it also gets in between insulation surfaces, like that's insulated from the uh, heat sink. You'd also have to do your fan motor bearings again, and in the end it's just not worth it. So they'd be trash. Now this little cube relay is a good example of how a relay works. And... Um, it's been out in the weather for a while. It's been rained on full time for quite a while. And because it's sitting upright, it didn't get anything in it. But I bet you if I were to drop that in a bucket of water, it would just wick its way inside. Especially if it was mounted on a panel like that. So you've got to replace your relays if you've uh, got a flood damaged appliance. Same with contactors. It's bloody windy out here. Well, the wind just came up something fierce, but I hope you got the gist of what I was saying. Um, this is just a bigger relay known as a contactor. Uh, again, it's got metal surfaces in it. This one's already been wet before. All these surfaces are rusted. Uh, this one just came out of a dead condensing unit. It's got a micro switch on it as well. Um, again, they might still work. They might engage. They won't probably won't seize up, but you'll still have oxide on the terminals. And also, with oxide on the iron core, they tend to vibrate. They'll hum very loudly. So I recommend replacing contactors as well. Okay, this old Fujitsu system is about as basic, old and reliable as they came before they went over to inverters. The outdoor unit is incredibly simple. There isn't one printed circuit board or integrated circuit in it. Pretty much everything is water resistant or waterproof. Capacitors are sealed. All you've got to do is clean the terminals, make sure they're dry, hit them with a bit of contact cleaner. Uh, silicon spray or even, even just WD-40 or inox. Uh, reversing valve coils are a moulded sealed plastic unit, they're fine. You've got to pop the top off the compressor and make sure that's not swimming in water. Wash it out, clean it out, put it back together again when it's dry. She'll be fine. Fan motor will have to come out in the long term, but you can probably get it going short term by taking the blade off and injecting the bearings with inox. Uh, the rear bearing is actually sealed in the housing, so that'll probably be your biggest problem best to pull the fan motor out and do it properly. Even if you just dry and clean the bearings and don't replace them, if you repack them with grease and jam them back in there, they'll probably run for another couple of years before they get too loud or stale. Um, yeah, the fan motor is going to be the most time consuming thing. Now that's on the basis that this unit doesn't get wet. The indoor unit can't get too wet. Because this is where the sensitive electronics are. 
So if the house has been up to floor level with water and this has been completely submerged outside, but the indoor unit's been dry, you're pretty much right, you can save that system. If this is full of mud from the Brisbane River or something like that, then you could be in trouble. Because it's got relays, uh, it's got sensitive ICs that can corrode and become semi-conductive between the pins. You really got to know what you're doing to restore the electronics inside one of these things. Okay, I've removed the outer cover from this unit and it's pretty easy to see there's a lot of circuitry in here. Uh, I've removed the top cover which has your manual control button and everything on it. The, this one's already been out in the rain a little bit so the IR sensor's all clouded up and rusty. So that's shagged anyway. And let alone the rest of it. Um, that's the main logic board or something. I'm going to pull him out. This unit's junk so I can pull it to bits. So that'd, all, that'd probably survive. You have to clean the buzzer out and make the contacts clean onto the back of it, those surface mounts and things. This is the main power board. Man, that wind's making a mess out there. Um, there's three, four relays on it, so there's a problem if they're full of muddy water. Could still dry it out and use it though, replace the relays. Fan motor would also have to come out and have its bearings lubricated or replaced. There's a control transformer in there which could be, become saturated with water. Yeah, so if one of these gets flooded, I wouldn't really bother fixing it. I'd just can it. Unless I was really desperate and had a surplus amount of parts available, like relays and things. I don't know. I'm saying no because I've got units everywhere and, well, yeah, I've got units everywhere, but for you at home, if your air conditioner has been damaged by water, well, maybe worth a try. But remember, you still got to get everything approved by an electrician before they turn your power back on. A uh, window unit's about the same. A window unit's essentially electronics like this, plus a manual thermostat and other switch. Just wash it out, dry it, hit it with some contact cleaner and it should work again. Again, the fan motor may have to come out at some stage and get new bearings. So try and take the fan motor out carefully and replace the bearings or grease them. Now, this is a fairly basic window unit. It's an old Mitsubishi. No electronics as such. Um, as usual, check your compressor. The fan motor looks like an absolute bastard to get out, but it will have to at some stage. Uh, controls are pretty durable. The timer might be a bit sensitive, that might die, but you can bypass things if you know what you're doing. But one thing I've got to say is if you're not competent working with high or mains voltage, that wind's making a mess out there. If you're not competent working with mains voltage and things, just don't do it. Get a Sparky to do it or find another air conditioner. I don't know what freight is on something like that, but I've got plenty of units I could send up north if anyone wanted them. They don't have front panels or anything like that, but you can get them out of my hair. So yeah, once again, you've got bearings to replace, electrics to dry out. Don't use pressure cleaners on coils because you bend the fins over. It's like pushing on them with your finger. But it can be done. You could fix a few air conditioners. Okay, well, this is a fan motor out of a slightly larger unit, a Mitsubishi. Um, they're just a normal uh, rubber sealed bearing. You can pop these seals out with the tip of a sharp knife and pack more grease into them, but they are susceptible to rusting very quickly. And you've got packing washers in there too. The housing's not really sealed anyway, and they do have drain holes at the bottom, but they're designed in such a way, with, like with this dome inside here, that water can't, still can't get to the bearings. Water will still ruin the bearings. Pull the shaft out. Hang on, gotta get rid of that clip. Now the motor insulation should be pretty right, but those bearings are your main concern, along with uh, any contactors, relays, and just cleaning and drying any electrical connections. If there's mud and crap in the printed circuits, then could be in a bit of trouble. So, hope that helps somebody out. Once again, don't try this unless you're fairly competent with electrical stuff. It does require some electrical know-how and safety, but yeah, I hope this helps uh, True Blue Australian out. He, he was the one who asked me to do this video. I um, hope he gets his gets his uh, life back in track, back on track. I know he lost everything in the flood, so is there any way I can help out with other videos and 
things, let me know. Thanks for watching.